right, so this is the last part of the review. Um, so here's some word problems. So we're going to start with number 25, where I've given you two functions. So the first one is the supply function is 4x plus 2, and the demand function is 14 minus x squared. And for part A, I just want to know how many items will be sold in market equilibrium. So we know um, market equilibrium means supply equals demand. So I have um, 4x plus 2 for my supply, and I have 14 minus x squared as my demand. Since this is a quadratic, I really want to move everything to the left side, set it equal to 0. So the x squared is coming over, it's positive. The 4x is staying positive. The 14 is coming over, so I have 2 minus 14 is negative 12. That's equal to 0. So I'm going to factor this. Factors of 12 that will give me 4 would be 6 and 2. Um, and I can see that that would mean um, that the um, 6 is positive, the 2 is negative, this is x, this is x, so this says x is 2 and x is negative 6. Oops, I wrote 2 there, I don't know what that's about. Alright, um, so here's what we need to be thinking is, I got two answers, which one makes sense? Only the positive one makes sense, I can't sell negative items, so the number of um, items sold in, me in market equilibrium is 2. Part B then says, um, find the producer surplus. Okay. So part B, we're looking for C of S is equal to, so we need the integral from 0 to x bar of the demand minus the price dx. All right, so remember, I will be giving you this formula for the test. You don't have to memorize it. But when we're looking at it, we have to say, well, what do we need to know? So we know x. We just found it. x bar is equal to 2. We know the demand function. The demand function is 14 minus x squared. What we need to find first is p bar, which is just we're going to throw the x into the demand function. So I have 14 minus 2 squared, which gives me 10. So my price is 10. All right, now that we have the price, we're ready to put this all together and find the consumer surplus. So let's scroll this up a little, give us some room. So we're going to go from 0 to 2, um, and we put the demand first, which is 14 minus x squared, and then I subtract the price, which was 10 dx. Okay. Um, we can simplify that. Let's make this 0 to 2. 14 minus 10 is just 4 minus x squared dx. This integrates nicely. The 4 becomes 4x. The x squared becomes x cubed over 3. I need to put in the numbers 2 and 0. So let's start with the 2. 4 times 2 minus 2 cubed over 3. And the 0, when you put it in, you get 0. So I'm just going to write 0 there to say, hey, I did it, but it didn't give me anything. All right, so from there, go to your calculator. 4 times 2 minus 2 cubed divided by 3. And it says, that we have 5.33 as the consumer surplus. Okay. So we're going to do this again, but now we're going to switch to the side of the producer. It's going to give us a little bit of room, but we don't have to do as much work now. Since we were in market equilibrium, we don't have to find the price. We know what the price is. The price is 10. The number, the quantity is 2, and we know the supply function is 4x plus 2. Um, and here, let me give you the formula, because I'll be giving it to you. It's p bar minus s of x dx. Okay, so this is given. Alright, so we just need to kind of plug that in and see what it looks like. So I start with 0 to 2, so there's my x. My p bar is 10, and I'm subtracting the supply for x plus 2. Important that you have these parentheses, because you don't want to lose that the 4 and the 2 are both negative. Alright, so before I integrate, I'm going to make this 0 to 2. 10 minus 2, so I'm looking at this part right here, the 10 and the 2, that gives me 8 minus 4x dx. Okay. Integrating, the 8's going to get an x, the 4 gets an x squared over 2, 0 and 2. So again, I like to simplify, so I'm going to say this is 8x minus 2x squared, 0 and 2. I have 8 times 2 minus 2 times 2 squared, and another time that when I plug in this 0, I'm just getting 0, so I'm putting it there just kind of as a placeholder. 
So you can do this in your head, you can do this in your calculator. 8 times 2 is 16, 2 times 2 squared is 8, 16 minus 8 is 8, so this is my producer surplus. So we have two more questions, kind of like that, about um, producers and consumer surplus. So in number 26, it says, find the consumer surplus for the following function, um, demand function at the given point. So find the consumer surplus at a price level, P bar is equal to 7, um, and a demand function of 25 minus 0.4x. Okay, so what I'm missing is the x bar. So we're going to set the price of 7 equal to the demand function 25 minus 0.4x, and that'll help us figure out how many items we're selling. So let's start with um, 7 minus 25 gives us negative 18 is negative 0.4x. Divide by negative 0.4, and that says our x is equal to 45. So the x that we get becomes x bar. Give us some room. All right, so we are going to integrate from 0 to 45. I put the demand function first, 25 minus 0.4x, and then we're going to subtract the price 7 that was given, dx. So as always, I'm simplifying before I integrate. Um, I do 25 minus 7, you're going to get 18 again, we had that earlier, minus 0.4x dx. So the 18 becomes 18x, the minus 0.4 is now minus 0.4x squared over 2, 0 and 45. Up to you now, um, but I do like to simplify this to 18x minus 0.2x squared, 0 and 45. The less things I have to put in my calculator, kind of the better. So I can put the 45, oops, doing a bad job writing that. So I have my 0.2 and this is 45 squared, and then subtract 0. So 18 times 45 minus 0.2 times 45 squared, um, that gives us 405. End of the problem, shouldn't be a big deal, so that one was only asking. Consumer, and I do do that on the test so that one question isn't, you know, going to make or break the whole problem. So the last one, we did producers and consumers, this one's I just did consumers. Alright, so in the next one, and this is the last one, it says find the equilibrium price and the quantities producer surplus given. So I have P equals D of X is 71 minus 1 tenth of X. And I also have a supply function, P equals S of X equals 35 plus 120 over X. So we're going to set these equal to each other because we want to start by finding the um, market equilibrium. Okay. So I have 71 minus 1 tenth of x equals 35 plus 1 twentieth of x. So I'm going to push all the numbers to one side and all the variables to the other. So I'm going to leave the 71 on the left and I'm going to subtract 35. So that's going to give me 36. And I'm going to do this slow because I think it messes people up. So I have one tenth of x and I have one twentieth of x. If you hate the fractions, just put them in your calculator and say um, one tenth is 0.1 and then one twentieth is 0 0.05. If that's better for you, then I want you to do that. I don't want the fractions to be why this problem doesn't work for you. That way I think you can see very easily how to add them together as 0.15 of x then 36 divided by 0.15 um, tells me x is 240, and this x is my x bar. All right, so nothing says just because I put you fractions in the problem, it doesn't mean you have to do fractions in your work. All right, so I am looking for the producer surplus. So I'm starting with 0 to my x bar, which is 240. Now I need the price, and I can see right now I don't have it, so that needs to be the next thing I do before I go any farther is to figure out what the price is going to be. So to get the price, I need to plug the 240 into either of the equations, and it really doesn't matter which one you do. You can do 71 minus 1 tenth of 240. So that's going to give you 71 minus 24, which is 47. Or if you like it better, you can do 35 plus 1 over 20 times 240. I just want you to see that it doesn't really make any difference. Um, plus 1 divided by 20 times 240. 
Either way, you get 47, so you pick which one you want to do. All right, so once I have this, then that is the beginning of the producer surplus and my integration. So I have the 47 minus, I have to go back to the supply function, which was 35 plus 1 over 20x. Now this does matter. Um, because it was market equilibrium, um, the x is the same for both supply and demand, the price is the same for supply and demand, but when you're doing producer surplus, you only want to use the supply function to figure out um, the quantity that we're getting. So don't use the demand, only use the, the supply. Alright, so we can pretty this up. Here's my producer surplus, 0 to 240. Um, this 47 minus 35, that's going to give me 12. Okay. And then I still have plus the 120 of x. Again, if that bothers you, make it 0.05x. Um, and actually, it's not plus now because we distributed. So let's actually fix that up and make that minus. Let's make sure I do the right thing. Okay, so the 47 minus 35 I got. Now the negative from the 1 over 20 I turned into a decimal because I think you do better with that. Um, if you don't like it, leave it as a fraction. Alright, so now I'm ready to integrate. So the 12 gets an x. The 0 0.05 becomes x squared over 2 and I have 0 and 240. So here's 12x. Again, you know I like to simplify this. 0 0.05 over 2 is 0 0.025 x squared, 0, 0,240. Right. One more time, I'm only having to put in the number part of 240. I don't really have to do anything with that 0. Let's kind of write that better. So I like to write the 0 just as a placeholder. So I have 12 times 240 minus 0 0.025 um, times 240 squared. That gave me 1,440, so there's my producer surplus, and that is the end of our review.